Welcome back. So I actually feel that I'm almost at a point where I could show this to a customer, but I'm like, you should always have a look at one more thing and that's error handling in your code. So I'm just going to show you guys how you can handle errors if you want to in your code. I'll jump back to the Angular code and right now what you'll see is that if an error occurs, we're actually just going to keep showing the loading template right here. And let me prove that. Right now the easiest way to kind of make an error right here is just to shut down the backend. So let's shut it down. Boom. It's gone. If I refresh the page now, you'll see the loading screen just stays there. And that's kind of wrong information because I'm not loading. I'm actually crushed, destroyed, broken because I didn't get a response back. I got an error back. So let's go and fix that. Now into the code, what we'll do is we'll say either we'll use loading here. We could actually add another template in here as well that says an error occurred. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to jump into our product as component right here first. In that component, we want to add a pipe again to our observable. And inside the pipe, what you can do is a pretty neat thing called catch error right here to explain that you want to start listening for error handling in your code. And you can just put an error fat arrow to kind of explain. I'm going to use this selector right here. Now the selector is going to have a lot of information for you. So let's just print it all the information today. I'll make a local reference to it, a local error right here. That's just going to point to that error. And then you need to do one more thing in order to continue using your code. And that's just throw that error again inside your code right here to kind of explain that even though I caught the error, I'm going to send it onward to anybody else who wants to use that error for something. For instance, print it into the console in your browser. I'll make a local reference right here to this field so that now we have an error available and let's just keep it as the any keyword for now, make it public like that and keep it as any, meaning that it could be anything that's inside such an error message. There we go. Now we can present the error inside our HTML code. So let's just go into the HTML code. We have the error available now in the HTML. So in here, what we're going to do is just right below the loading screen, let's just present that error right here and save it and see what happens. Now we get object object. That's not very informative. We don't know what that is. Now we could start just figuring out what this is, but the coolest thing is another pipe called JSON. Now what that can do is actually take your error and convert it into a JSON object and present that as text. So what will happen again, if I save this is you can actually see now the actual error that you have and notice it's not just an error object. It's actually with headers. It's everything, the error message you're getting back actually right here. That's what we're seeing. In our case, what we want to show is the message. So let's actually try and show that message instead. So we can just do right here instead of error, we can say error. Let's put a question mark, meaning if it's not null, I want to actually print the message right here. That's what I want to show for that error. So let's try and see what happens now. You'll see HTTP failure response, blah, blah. This is not a very good error. We'll make better ones later. But again, this is just to show you how easy it is to get that information and display it to an actual user right here. We shouldn't show the loading anymore either. So let's make a bit more magic down here saying, uh, let's just make another NGF right here. We'll make, um, let's make just a, a P tag right here. And that's what we're going to put in our loading information like this. So we'll say if loading right here, we'll do um, an NDF again, you can add these as many times as you want. So we'll do an NDF. We'll say if there's not an error, I want to show a loading screen I'll make another template down here. So I'll do another NG template, which is going to be my error actually. And that's where we're going to print the error message like this. And we're going to say else in this one, the if statement will be else. And then we have to give this a name and let's just call it the error down here to kind of show you that one error like this. And then we can say else error. So now it means we are either going to show this message right here or we're going to show the error down here. But with this name now we have a problem because it thinks that this name, which is actually the one I'm trying to get to this error in here, it actually thinks now that that's this one in the else statement. So we have to kind of rename it to error temp maybe or something like that to make it clear that it's this template down here. And there we go. Now we have two templates inside our system right here. And uh, now hopefully when we get an error, we're going to show this guy. And when we don't have an error, we're going to show this guy. So let's see what happens in the code. Right now we have an error. So we're showing the HTTP failed. Let's just start our server again like this and just refresh the page. There we go. Now we have the loading screen again. And now since the server is running, everything is good. Let's just stop the server again and refresh the page. There we go back to our error. That's it. We're done with the get all products. There might be changes we have to do. We'll go and do those later, but let's actually end this and the task is done. And let's just stop it and yes, stop it now. So next lesson, we're going to try and have a look at something else, but let's just wrap it up right now. You have now error handling and everything is ready to show to the actual customer. See you next time.